Hello. This is a computer, and I'm going to start it counting by just typing out these instructions. So I type run, return, one, return, one, two. It starts very slowly. Three, four, five. It's picking up speed a little bit now. But where do you think it'll get to by the end of the program? And we've got about 13 minutes left. Have a guess. We'll come back to it every now and then just to see where it's got to. And that is about as fast as it's going to go. Well, Mary, it'll get up to at least a million. What will? That computer. Get up to a thousand at least. I thought you said a million. Well, perhaps not a million exactly, but half a million or so. Well, several thousand. How big's a thousand? Uh, well, it's smaller than a million, isn't it? Much smaller? Oh, yes, much smaller. Do you think that that's a thousand? Well, what's that? Well, it's grains of rice. Do you think there are a thousand grains there? Um... More, I should think. 10,000? Oh, no. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say there were about 1,247 grains in there, but I don't know, and I'm certainly not going to count them. Oh, wouldn't you like to know how near you are? You don't have to count them all. All right, then. Right. Well, if you just count out 10 grains of rice here. Right, 10, that's easy enough. Uh, now, one, two, three. They're very fiddly, aren't they? Mm. Four, five, six, seven. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right. Ah! Eight, nine, and ten. Lovely. There, ten grains of rice. Uh, into each circle. What? How many have we got? Uh, oh, that's easy. There's ten lots of ten, so that's one hundred. That's right. Ten lots of ten make one hundred. Yes. And ten lots of a hundred... Hmm. A thousand grains of rice. Hmm. And a thousand grains of rice. I can get them together neatly. Mm -hmm. Ooh, missing a few. Are just enough yes. to fit into this matchbox. as many matchboxes as we can with the rice. Ah, then we'll know how many thousands of grains there are. That's right. Got it. So we've got one. There's two. Two thousand. Uh, yeah. Three thousand, roughly. Mm. Four thousand. Hey, I was nowhere near right, was I? Well, it's difficult, really, with mm. rice. Five thousand. Hold on. Five thousand. I have to top this up. I think we'll get one more out of that. Left? Yes, I think so. Yep. Just, just about. We sneak these in. Yeah. So. Six. Six thousand grains of rice. Hmm. Hey, it's not very impressive, really, is it? A thousand? I mean, it doesn't look very much. Oh, well, no, not when you use rice, but if you had a thousand of something else, like. Um, a thousand apples or a thousand marbles. Ah, now a thousand marbles will be big. Would you like to see 20,000 marbles? 20? Look, 20,000 marbles will fill this studio. Do you think so? Yes. Can you come to... with me.
How about that? 20,000 marbles. Ye gods. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, one, one for, for me. You, one for me. Two for you. One, two for me. We've got about uh, eight minutes now to the end of the programme, and the computer's reached 3,890. Hmm. What have you got there, Fred? Ah, well, this is something new. It's a peg board, you see. Uh, it's just a board with holes in it, and these pegs that fit inside. Oh, well, what's it used for? Well, you can make patterns with it, or play games on it, or you can use it to solve problems. And how are you using it? Well, I'm solving a problem, you see. Look at that peg in the middle. Mm. Now, can you put a peg next to it? Is that a problem? No, just go. Well, just do it. Right. Um, there. OK. Now, is that the only peg you could put next to that one in the middle? Uh, no, I don't think so. I can put one here, can't I? One there. Yeah. Two. Three. Four. That all? Yes. Well, you see, here's the problem. What about these four pegs here? One, two, three, four. Are they next to or not next to that peg in the middle? Um, well, they're further away. Yes, but they're still next to it, aren't they? Because you can't get another peg in between them and the one in the middle. Ah, so they're still next to each other? Well, that's right. Yes, I mean, next to means you can't get another peg in between them. Ah, well, that's my rule. I see. Uh, well, what about this? That's a lot further away. Hmm, but it's still next to, because you can't get a third peg in between them. There's no place on the board, is there? Oh. Oh, yes. So, according to your rule, that's next to. Yeah. And some more like that as well. Are they? Yeah, there's one there, look. Um, ah, there. yes, there's some over here. That one there. And one here. Uh, there. Yes, and here. Ah, so there's about, ooh, 16 or so, all next to that one in the middle. Mm, using your rule. That's a lot. Hmm. How many are really different? Well, they're all different, because they're all in different places on the board. Yes, but look, there are only three different patterns, aren't there? You see, because there's, there's that sort. Yeah. Yes, which gives us those. Yes. And then there's like that, 
for these ones a bit further out. And like that for the ones on the outside. Hmm, so we've only got three different patterns for next two using your rule. That's right. And that solves the problem. Hey, how's that computer count getting on? Where is it? Uh, five, five, nine, five, five thousand nine hundred and fifty something. That's a lot. It is. Hmm. And we've got uh, about four minutes left to go. And here's the first part of the story about a mathematician that had a problem. Once upon a time, there was a hill. And on the hill was a castle. And in the castle lived a rather stubborn king. And in the furthermost corner of the castle, in a tower at the top of a winding staircase, lived a mad mathematician. Off with his head, roared the king. Yeah, but, but why, said the king's chamberlain, who was rather fond of the mad mathematician. Well, because I can't stand him wandering round the castle, mumbling lots of numbers, or measuring the height of the tower with a ball of string, or, well, the reason is because I say so, said the king, and that's good enough for you. Off with his head! Now, the chamberlain was rather worried about all the executions that had been taking place. In any case, the mathematician was the only one who could check the milk bill each week. If only he could postpone the execution. Um, yep. why don't you set the mathematician a, a really hard task, said the chamberlain. And, um, if he can't do it, then you have good reason for executing him. Oh, that's really not such a bad idea thought the king, and he summoned the mathematician. You must draw, um, a windmill, the king commanded, and my daughter will be the judge of it. Have it ready in the throne room at noon tomorrow. At the appointed hour, the mathematician came into the throne room with the drawing. Oh, look at that lovely windmill, your majesty, said the princess. The king had to admit that it was a fine drawing, and turned to the mathematician and said, uh, Tell me, how did you come to draw such a splendid windmill? Oh, it's, it's not secret, said the mathematician. First, you see, I imagined the surface of my paper to be made up of hundreds of lines. Uh, some of the lines are straight, some are curved, and they go this way and that way in all ways. And then all I have to do is to pick out those lines I need to make the windmill. Really? said the king, trying not to look too interested. Well, we shall see how you get on next week when things will be a lot more difficult. Ha! Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Ah, what have we got? 8,059. Ah, yes. Nowhere near half a million, is it? No. 8,059. Hey, I've just worked out. How long do you think it would take to count up to a million? Oh, uh, a day? More or less, yes. It would take until lunchtime tomorrow. Fantastic, that. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Time for our lunch.